everybody welcome back to my youtube channel today it has snowed so i thought i would take you with us oops and show you what uh we get up to when it snows which is not very much but nonetheless let's give it a try so this is my garden it is quite deep I'm just going to make sure the chickens, the chickens that are in here, by the way, are doing all right. I'm going to try not to knock. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. There's a lot of weight in that. Oh God. Oh, poor little things. They're going to hate it. Their food is still all right. got bird flu in the UK at the moment and so we have to have the coop covered like this oh gosh this is bad I need to go and get that dog bowl put some water in it flipping egg oh god we are so useless in the UK um so the cage has to be covered which is what I was just saying about but um it's um, it's a nightmare, basically, isn't it? This, this is not not what we want. And I've got so much clothing on. I've got three pairs of trousers on because it is really cold as well. Let's go take a little bit of water for when they get up. Um. Oh no! Oh Bentley dog! Oh no! But that means you're going to have to go through the house, darling. This is bad. He says it's great. He loves the snow. He'll get little dingleberries on his legs. <sighs> Not what I need. Don't you dare go back in that house, you monster. Right, so I'm going to put some food, the water, in a dog bowl. <laughs> in here, like this. <laughs> One thing I love about snow is how quiet everything becomes. I'm going to open this door now. Come on, open. Clever chicken door I've got. Hopefully they just go in here and stay in here today. If anybody didn't know, I've got comedy names for some of my chickens. So there's Kanye Nest, the cockerel. And then he's got a girlfriend called Kim Kardashian Hen. Oh, Bentley, really don't know why. No, no, you stay there. Look at you. No, you're gonna have to go around the side. I'm gonna let you in the side. I'm gonna put you in the car around the other side. No, you can't come through the house. Sorry, darling, I'm sorry. I feel quite bad, but he's not walking through the middle of my dry house. Absolutely not. Right, let's go and get in the car then. Very important cup of tea going in. Still got a lot of snow up on the old dash. Wow. I don't really want to be walking about in these snow in these shoes. Bentley, here. Bentley, here. Come on. Oh, bless you. You was just sitting there waiting. You would just sit and wait forever. By the way, these are the shoes that I've got. I'm not joking. Come on in. It's going to be these. Or trainers. Oh, good. You put snow all in the back. Perfect. Hmm. I put, turned the car on, but I now need to clear the snow. Say a little prayer, everyone. Woo! Fun. I mean, fun. Ugh. Well, I've made it. My car does not like it, but I've made it. Goodness me, this is proper snow. Okay, well, I've made it with my clogs 
I, uh, I have not driven all the way up the drive for obvious reasons. Our driveway is very, very steep. It's not obvious to you guys, actually, is it? My driveway is very steep here. So I am uh, going to have to walk, which is shit because I do not have appropriate shoes in the car. So I'm currently just changing into a pair of trainers and I'm going to have to go like this. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Definitely grateful of the ski trousers today. So I made it up the drive in my trainers and I am going to go and put some better shoes on. Hi everyone! Hi Dondi! Hello darling! Hello darling! Hello! Hello! Hello, hello! You all like snow? I don't think so. For her muscles, because she has PSSM, your muscles need to be warm, don't they? So she probably doesn't like snow. Have you seen snow before? You must have. You seven. You a grown up. Yeah. Oh, itchy. Oh, itchy. Nice. Hello, Belarus. Oh, you look good for a little trim up. Were you good? Meg did some trimming yesterday. Beards. Beards and bridal paths. This is Quiz. She's four. She's got one beautiful blue eye. This one, like Ralphie. <laughs> it's gonna be on YouTube, Quiz. Yeah. Clara, goodness, you've made a mess. Oh, young horses, I tell you what, they are disgusting in stables. Hello, Wally Wallace. Wally Wallace, looking for a new home. Good boy. Right, one more bit of snow in inappropriate shoes, and then, <laughs> then I'm done with shoes in inappropriate, snow in inappropriate shoes. That any of that makes sense? So the, uh, that's the arena. <laughs> the girls have just been over the road. Lucy managed to get here. She has to go the similar sort of route to me. Um, <clears throat> Meg lives here, thank goodness. There's always somebody here. But, um, yeah, the girls have just been over the road, given some hay to the two groups that we have over there. They have a field shelter to and feed this morning. So that's them sorted and done. So now we're going to try and make some sort of route to the horse walker, I think, from the barn. So that those that are in the barn can at least go on the horse walker today. But there will be nothing else going on. The ground under the snow is a bit frozen as well. So just one of those things. Just one of those things that dogs think it's amazing. Dogs! Bentley! Bentley! Here! Yeah. Come! Woo! <laughs> Speaking of shoes. We actually only have one horse now that has shoes on. All of the others um, are barefoot. So that's something because barefoot horses cope much, much better in snow than shod ones. Um, in like cold European countries, as far as I'm aware, they put like, they're called like snow pads, basically. And they are, looking for my gloves, they are um, like a padded cover that goes over there, like inside their shoe to stop snow going in. But we don't get enough snow in the UK to warrant doing things like that. So I'll just have barefoot horses anyway, so much easier. So, um, right, the first job is going to be clearing some of this stuff. So I've just cleared that and that. Now I need some grit, of which we do have, thankfully. Salt and grit. Oh, I'm getting hay out. The hay barn's going to be a job. The hay barn is like on the other side of the yard. It's going to be rubbish. I'm using this. <laughs> Apparently, we don't have the right equipment. Lucy's got a shovel. 
mate's got a spade. It's not great. Doing the best we can do. So we've got this cleared, nearly. This is a work in progress. I've had to, uh, obviously, rock salt, really bad for dogs. Meg's dog's got some little boots. You don't have any boots, do you? And you kept being a bit silly, didn't you? So I've had to time up because you're getting sore paws. I realise this is going to be a very boring video, potentially, because basically all we're going to do is put the horses on the horse walker. Um, but I will talk to you a bit about like what bedding we're using and stuff at the moment, because I think it's a really interesting topic because um, we're using a much more eco-friendly bedding these days. We use um, chopped straw instead of shavings. And if anybody knows, there has very unfortunately been a war in Ukraine. So lots of supply channels from bloody Russia have stopped, meaning things like the the raw material of timber, this happens every year, but this time it's much worse. The raw material of timber has um, been much less. So it means that there is less timber for making shavings out of because the shavings are a byproduct of the timber industry. So yeah, so there isn't any shavings around. Well, there are some, but they're very hard to get hold of and they are so expensive. A bale, one bale, very popular bale in the UK. They're very big bales. They used to be like 10 pounds a bale. They're now 13 pounds 50. And when you've got a lot of horses, that's a lot of extra. So we are using a um, company called Sundown Bedding predominantly. So we use a chopped wheat straw and then we're also now using their pellets. So they have like a straw pellet. I'll show you both when we get them out. But um, a straw pellet, and what you do is you put it underneath the chopped straw, and then you don't take it out every day, and it runs a bit like a deep litter bed, but only for a couple of days. So it takes the, you take the wet out every four or five days. And what this does is it allows A, less waste of bedding, B, the horses have dry feet because all the wet is like sucked down to the bottom of the bed. It doesn't get turned up in the top of it. And um, it's much more eco-friendly because straw is a waste product in the UK. So I suppose you could say that shavings were a waste product in the timber industry, but to a slightly different degree. Definitely a different degree because you've got to chop a tree down. Whereas straw is from the production of wheat which is obviously a huge industry so there's always going to be straw yeah interesting an interesting topic i mean they're much more affordable a bale of the sundown head chopped straw when i buy it in bulk is i think eight pounds and we use two a week um, if they are particularly dirty then we use slightly more than that and we have got one horse that was uh, intolerant to eucalyptus which is something that they put in the bedding to stop them from eating it and it makes it smell very nice it's actually a really great addition but for one of the horses he got a swollen sheath and so that was working out what that was um, so he has to have shavings so we do have some shavings but a different type a smaller bale that are completely ineffective and not cost effective at all so I don't recommend shavings anymore so yes so uh, we're nearly the girls are just shoveling mark not mark shoveling the snow out the walker every now and then look there you go you can see it in the, in the distance um, and then we're gonna get them all on the walker get them having good march rounds get their blood pumping get their legs moving which is really important and then we're going to muck out and I'll show you the beds and how we do it. It's much quicker too because you don't have to take all of the wet out. So you just take the droppings off the top and then tidy it up unless they need the wet taking out and then you do a full muck out, sweep the floor, all the rest of it. But um, yeah, it's really interesting. We're not using it properly, the, the, the straw pellets, uh, because what you're meant to do is like make an entire base. 
but we're using it where we know the horses make like pee and then it soaks that bit up. Anyway, I'm getting Zora, I'm holding my phone up. So I better go and help the girls on the walker. There we go, Zora. Here we have Boots. Here comes Blondie. Are you having a nice time? It's not so bad, is it? Good job. And here's little Belle. And there's Zora. So they'll all go on there for half an hour this morning. Um, and then they'll go on again for half an hour in the afternoon. And to be honest, they'll be totally fine. And if you can't get your horse out of its stable for a day of its life when it snows, it's fine. And it's better that they stay safe in a stable than go out in the field and twist an ankle, slip, whatever, trash your fields, any of the above. So here we have Zora's bed before I muck her out. On Saturday, she had the middle taken out and dry pellets put in. So today I will literally just skip this top bit out, make sure there's no hay and stuff in it. And then I'll show you how dry it is without having to muck it out. Hey guys, so uh, I was trying to do a time lapse of me doing this and I was filming Blondie's stable on the other side, but I couldn't, I didn't work that out. So what I've basically done is just taking the poo off the top. I'll now continue to do that in the correct stable. So then that is the finished bed. It's really thick and it keeps their feet really dry and they love it it's got a bit of hay in it she's a bit of a monkey and puts her hay in it but it works really really well and it's much more efficient i've only taken this amount out this is the this is the wet pellet but i did i just dug a bit because um this bit was a little bit on the edge so yeah, that's what it looks like when it's finished. And actually you can see that I shouldn't have taken that out yet because it was not fully, it's not fully soaked up, but it had lifted a little bit. So that's what I did. And so now we do Blondie's, who has made a terrible mess and not eaten our breakfast. Who knows? Right, round two. So this is Blondie's bed. So I've just, I've just started, but so this, it's really hard to see on here, but like this is the wet bit now. So there's, it's not all wet, but this is five days of wet. And I've just basically skipped out the top and moved the bed away. And so I'm gonna go and take out these wet patches and then put more pellets in. So I'll show you that process. So we've got clean, 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 very clean. And then this is the wet patch. So I've literally just like picked it up and scraped it, but you can see how it holds it where they do it. So it means that you don't get a fully wet floor and it means that the bedding around it doesn't get destroyed. So let's go empty the wheelbarrow and then get some new bedding and I'll show you. it's nice and thick and very nice and dry underneath you can see the bags really spread remarkably well um so you only need to use a bag i'm pretty sure that the recommended use is not that i'm pretty sure the recommended use is that you put it down like a whole bed and then uh, wet it but we don't do that we let the horses wet it so basically you end up with um, only having to take the wet out every five or so days. And then, hello darling, hello. It's a much more efficient use of our time. 
<laughs> what are we doing? Eating some bits? I'm having errors with my videoing skills. I literally just groomed Blondie all over. You would have watched, but I didn't video it. And I've literally just been literally brushing all the backs of her legs, all her tummy, everything. And I put some of this amazing stuff in her tail. So this stuff is called Beautify by Naked Horse. And I put like two little pumps in my hand and I've put it in her tail. And her tail is like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's so soft. It looks all nice. It's a bit, it's a bit floofy. Them bits. And then I put it in her mane as well. Look at that. You are beautiful, Blondie Dondie. Right, let's keep brushing you then. Thing about these brushes, but it didn't get recorded. So these are special brushes. Um, they're called KBF 99. And basically, on the bristles, they have bristles. And so the bristles kill bacteria, these microscopic bristles. They kill fungus and bacteria. So like brushing your horse with one of these is actually really good for them because it can help to like with mud fever, for example, it can help to kill bacteria in the, on the skin and stop them getting infections. Things like for Blondie, she's sometimes had like skin, like little bumps on her skin from where she's had blocked pores, that sort of thing. So the breakdown of the bacteria is like giving them a bath without giving them a bath. It's really amazing. So I'm going to keep brushing her with it. I'm sorry, I don't have a tripod today to set my phone up. It smells nice, huh? You like it? Like the smell? She's really funny about smell as well, actually. So it's interesting that she doesn't mind it. Nice. Nice. Do you like having your face brushed? You'll all be pleased to know that her forelock has finally grown out. Might as well give you an update on her, haven't I, really? We think my phone is getting cold. That is what the issue is. But Blondie has PSSM and it means that her muscles don't feel nice and it means that she is the PX and the P8 variant. And it basically means that, well, without putting it too bluntly, it's a bit like she is a bit autistic. Um, she struggles with change. She struggles with new things, new people. So I'm going to have to film it this way around. The quality won't be as good, but at least I'll know if my phone stops videoing. So basically, it's a case of keeping her body in very good mineral balance. So she has a special balancer from a company called Equifeast. Um, she also needs to be kept warm. Exercise is good for her. I do think that more horses have this genetic predisposition than we would think, and that we are testing more and more now because people are talking about it. So it's just a hair test that I did to look at the genetics. You can do a muscle biopsy, but if you do a muscle biopsy, um, they have to have, so there are some, some strains of the PSSM that um, mean that they tie up, like they get azoteria more commonly because the muscle can't function properly. Um, that thankfully is not the trait that Blondie carries. But um, it does mean that her muscles are affected. That's why she switches her tail, she's grumpy. She's been very difficult for people previously. So basically it's a case of different management for her that means that I understand much better how to look after her, what to feed her. Hers is not affected by grass. Hers is affected by uh, cold, mineral balance, exercise, um, going slowly. Like 
when you're explaining something new to her to go very slowly and not to expect her to have the answer. I mean, that can be said for all horses, but she finds that particularly upsetting. Um, what else is there? Things like ceramic rugs. So we have a back on track rug for her and also the Therapy Tech rug from Weatherbeater. Both of those things are very good for her muscles. But the, the biggest thing has been feeding her differently. So we feed her a high fiber, high fat, low starch, zero sugar diet. And yeah, she's doing great. She's looking super very shiny and healthy and happier, just so much happier. Right, I need to put some rugs on her before I freeze her to death. Hang on. So there she is, all tucked up. So she's got her back on track underneath and then her weather to therapy tech over the top to keep her snug. Now it's Zora's turn, I need those brushes. Oh, I haven't done her feet, <laughs> always fun. Just been giving Zora a nice groom. Same as Blondie Dundies. Love this new, the oil stuff. It's amazing. Look at her tail. Look at that. Whoa. Beautiful. You can use it in hot water when you hot cloth them. Can't wait. I'm excited for that. Um, I won't clip Zora now till the new year because we're not doing very much before Christmas because it's like, what, 15th, 12th, 12th today. So, um, yeah. But anyway, she's looking great. Super shiny, little bit porky, but very healthy. We've been getting a saddle sorted. We've had endless problems with saddle with Zora. So we are getting that sorted, but it is more sorted than it's ever been up until now. So I will share that with you when it's fully sorted. What are you laughing at? <laughs> are you a being funny girl? Are you? You can have a nap now, Zors. Oh yeah, big yawns. She was just yawning her head off a minute ago. Are you okay? What are you doing down there? What are you doing down there? Um, so there is not enough to do for three members of staff, seeing as we can't exercise anything. So I do have a lot of other work that I can do involving my computer. So I'm gonna head back home now. The girls are gonna go around, give everything a groom like I just did for Blondie and Zora. And then they are gonna have a bit of an easy day, do some jobs, that sort of thing. Everything will go back on the walker after lunch about two o'clock for another half an hour. And then Meg, and then Leg Lucy will leave, do the field horses, and then she'll go home and Meg will do the last bit on her own because it's not worth Lucy being stuck in the snow. So yeah, I'm gonna go home now and do a load of computer work. So I have my online training platform. So I have some videos to create for that. I've already got the content, which is great. And that's gonna be the rest of my day. I look forward to seeing Ralph and I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, very interesting conversation around bedding, I think, and something that maybe we need to all look, a bit, look at a bit more. Um, and a little blondie update. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will see you for next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. Snowy Miriam, over and out.